All right, this is an update to a video I released a while ago uh, where I kind of walked through how to use Power Automate, um, at the time it might have been Microsoft Flow, uh, to take a file that's been uploaded through a Microsoft form and store it in a SharePoint site, tag it with some metadata. And there are some pieces I left out of there or things that I glossed over, so I wanted to go through again. And I'm not going to go to all of the detail of that video as far as tagging it with metadata, etc., from the form. Uh, but I am going to base, just show the, the framework of how to get that file, get the identifying information for the file that was uploaded through the form, uh, and then save that to a SharePoint site. So if you've worked with forms and file attachments, you probably already know that at least some you've worked with personal forms more than likely and know that those files get saved to your OneDrive uh, location or OneDrive storage. Um, if you're using a group form, the files are going to be saved to the SharePoint team site for that group. Um, however, because of because the forms themselves don't necessarily work differently, whether it's a personal form or a group form, uh, aside from where it stores the file, the language that it uses, the, the identification info for that file, follows the OneDrive convention versus the SharePoint convention. So in SharePoint you have a, a URL and a library name and an ID or an identifier. Um, in the OneDrive nomenclature, it's a little bit different. It uses something called a drive ID and then an ID. Uh, the drive ID being sort of the path or the location, uh, but it's it's the GUID or the big ugly multi you know uh, alphanumeric character identifier for that location, and then the ID is the GUID of the file. So you can't just shove those into the those values into the SharePoint actions and have them work. So what I'm going to do is just walk through. I've got a form here called File Upload Demo, and I'll just say you know. In the text field here something and then I will attach a file and I'll upload a file called yeah, let's do this daydream believer file so I'll upload that and click submit all right so that submitted the form and I'm just going to go back. This is the flow that I built, and it's a pretty standard flow um, in terms of form response. So if I open up the run that just occurred, uh, essentially I'm just when new response is submitted to that form, um, I'm getting the response details. And this is the first thing you need to be aware of is that the essentially how the 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 language or the the terminology it uses to identify that file upload is going to be shown in your file or the, the field under your file upload question. So this attach your submission here, this that's the name of that file upload question. So this is, this whole block here is what I need to identify that file. But I can't plug these values directly into any other action. What I need to do, because this is JSON, I need to parse this out to get the values or get the fields that I need from it in order to then get that file. So what I'm going to do is just highlight the, that data and copy it for right now. And then I'm going to go to edit mode here. I'm going to add a new step. And this will be the parse JSON step. And what do we what? field or value do we want to parse the JSON of and that will be the attach your submission so this will be you just select your uh, file upload question and then for the schema I'm going to click generate from sample paste in what I copied out of the file upload value before click done and then it should look something like this so I won't go through all of these but basically we're seeing that it is a, a an array value because file upload questions can have up to 10 files attached so it even if you restrict it to one it still has to handle it has to treat it as if it's an array or as if it could have multiple values um, that's going to come back in in a second but 
don't worry about it for right now but just know that you need to have um, the properties visible here so the name the link the type the size the drive ID uh, an upload session URL and then there's a few other things here nothing too exciting uh, but that's what we need to do for without this you can't do the next step uh, so now the next thing we need to do is get the file metadata and if you've worked with files at all in Power Automate you know that there's there's the metadata or the properties of the file and there's the content of the file and just to be clear in order to do what we want to do we can't really copy that file so there's no file copy action or there's no action to directly copy a file from OneDrive um, in Power Automate to SharePoint. Uh, you can copy it from one OneDrive location to another or one SharePoint site to another but there is no out-of-the-box action to copy from a OneDrive location to a SharePoint location at this point in time. Um, so basically what we need to do is get the file metadata from OneDrive uh, again using the OneDrive nomenclature and then we need to get the file content using that identifier uh, and then we'll use the SharePoint action to actually create a file so we're not copying a file we're, we're just we're actually creating a duplicate of it uh, so the first thing we need to do is get that file metadata so I'll say get file metadata and again I need to use the OneDrive for business connection or connector um, and then for the, uh, this is the tricky part, for the unique identifier of the file, we need to actually uh, concatenate or stick together two different values here. So we need the drive ID. This is the, the uh, big ugly GUID of the location in OneDrive where the file is stored. Or in SharePoint, again, it's, it's that value is used interchangeably. Uh, and then I need a period or a dot and then we need the ID so essentially the drive ID dot ID that is the unique identifier for that file that this action needs to get the metadata now that I have the metadata and you'll see you may have noticed that that when I selected that drive ID it forced us into this apply to each loop again this is because that file attached there might be one file attached there might be 10 files attached so it has to basically cycle through this for each file that is attached if you only have one attachment it's only going to run once so it's not really there's no harm in doing in this apply to each being here uh, but if you are in a situation where you're attaching allowing multiple attachments then absolutely you need the apply to each all right so now that we have the metadata I need to get the content of the file so I'll do get file content again from the OneDrive for business connector and in this case I'm going to select the ID the unique identifier that's being output by the file metadata action previous um, so that's it now I have the metadata the properties of the file and I have the content so the next thing I need to do is write that file to SharePoint uh, and in that case, obviously, I need to use the SharePoint action. So I'm going to select Create File from the SharePoint connector. And then I'm just going to select a SharePoint site here. Select my Sandbox site. And I'll go to... Uh, I have a folder here, a library called Archive Files. We'll save it there. Now for the file name, uh, I'm going to use the name that's output by that parse JSON, which will be the name of the file. And for the file content, I need to select the file content that's output by the get file content action. And that's it. So I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to go back to my form and I'm just going to throw another file here and attach that and we'll just grab some other random Word document collecting signatures sure why not select that upload it go back to our flow 
and fingers crossed that it's running if I did everything right it should succeed it did and just know that it it will take a few seconds to run depending on the file, file the actual size of the file especially if it's a if it's a larger file in this case it's you know under 100 kilobytes so it's very quick but if you have something like yeah 10 meg pdf it's going to take a few minutes for this to run that's just how it works um, so we can see that it created a file in archive files with this name so if I go over to that sandbox let me just find my you know what let me cut to the chase go to site contents archive files there is my created just now by me uh, so there you go so that is pretty much it again just to, to recap a little bit um, the really important part the, the critical part is um, getting the response details parsing the JSON that's returned in the file attachment question um, so that you're getting the proper values and then the the real key is using the OneDrive actions to get the file metadata and the content um, and then you can write that file in this case we're creating a file in SharePoint if we wanted to create a file in some other one you know somewhere else in OneDrive we could do that um, and as I said even if you're using a group form and you know you know that the file is being saved from that group form into a SharePoint site you still need to use the OneDrive actions to get the file metadata and get the file content uh, just because that's how forms that's the the terminology and the language that forms is using or returning to identify that file so seems a little weird but that's basically what you need to do to make it work so hopefully this helps um, if you're struggling with this and as I said from this I was doing this as a very simple example but if you did want to incorporate any changes or, or incorporate metadata from that file uh, I'm sorry from the form submission to add properties to the file essentially once you've created the file you could add an action in here to update file properties and basically you would just match this up to the same site and the same library and then the ID would be the item ID from the create file action uh, and then you could throw in here maybe you want to include the um, the value from that text field tell us a little about your submission I could do that hit save um, and there you go now one thing to be aware of is that if, as you're testing this if you try recreating or basically rerunning the file again this create file step will fail because once the flow is run it's created a file there and if it tries to create another file with the same name in the same place it will fail so just be aware of that that's that's a complication not 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 a a flaw in the process that's just how the create file action works in power automate uh, it'd be great if there were an option in here to you know an advanced property where you could say rename the file or pen something but there there isn't so that's just something you need to be aware of and, and work around all right so hopefully this, hopefully this helps and um, please if you have any questions leave them in the comments below